Hello again. Welcome to another edition of the Real Ale Guide. Hello, Mrs. Real Ale Guide. Hello. Um, we are going down to Shepherd Neen Brewery tomorrow, the makers of Bishop's Finger, Spitfire, Canterbury Jack, amongst others. We are going down to brew a ginger beer. I've been peeling all the fresh ginger with my tool. Use the ginger here. Just there you go. It's a kilo of ginger, we're going to be brewing a thousand pints of, it's going to be a ginger porter should I say. So this will be added to the videos tomorrow. But there's a ginger, oh look at Mal's poor hands. Um, and this is the process. Can you see? There you go, so we've been at this now for about an hour. So we've probably got another hour to go. And then we'll carry on getting ready for tomorrow's trip. Trip, but make sure. It's the, I mean, it's dark outside. We're not. There's nothing really on the telly. We're not really telly people anymore. Um, so unless check. It's the Grand Prix. Unless it's the Grand Prix. Um, Come on, gents. Look out for the ginger porter. The making of with Stuart Main, head brewer, shepherd name tomorrow. So bye. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Again, welcome to another edition of the Real Ale Guide. We are in Faversham in Kent. It looks an absolutely beautiful place. But Faversham is the home of Shepherd Neem, Shepherd Neem Brewery, where it's Britain's oldest brewer, 1698. We are down here to brew a ginger porter, um, so we're just going to get off the train now. Phil Have a look at this beautiful old station. Look at it. This is Fabrishop Station. Tune in for some, some more bits and pieces in the in the next few hours. Okay, we've just arrived at Shepherd Neem. Uh, this is a beautiful facade of the building. Um, I understand Polly's just been redone. Yeah, yeah, just in time for the hot festival. Just in time for the hot festival. Yeah. So let's have a look inside. We're going to have a good time. We're going to be brewing a ginger porter here with Shepherd Neen. Britain's oldest brewer. And sign in for, well, tune in for some more footage very, very shortly. The history here is unbelievable. Cheers. All these photographs are great. Yeah. Hello again, welcome to another edition of the Real Ale Guide. We are outside of the Sun Inn in Faversham. And this pub is, well, it's a very, very old place. We're staying over in that room down there. Um, we're just going to go in and pull a pint of the master group. Sorry, Jane. Can I go over there? By all means, please do. Uh, so I just grab a glass? Yeah. Thank you very much. So this is the... Fit the black. Not on the top. Yeah. Right, okay. This is the Master Brew Bitter. Can I just ask what ABV this is? It is 3.7, 3.8. 3.7% ABV. Pint. So I'm just going to come and we're going to, me and James from Shepherd Neen, we're going to talk about this Master Brew Bitter. So what have we got here then James? Oh, well Master Brews are um, 
top selling ale in Kent. Right. Um, obviously quite a hoppy light session ale. Yeah. Really. Okay. So let's get the nose. Mm, it's quite, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. Light. Um, yeah. Hoppy aromas, nice. A bit of spice on the Yeah, slightly. A slight bit of spice. Yeah. Let's get the sweet malt in there as well, yeah. which, is, which is always good. So, thank you, James. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Oh, wow. Well. That is, you get the lightness. It's, it's hoppy. You get the lightness, you get the feel with this beer of a hard working day. Yeah. Or you've just mown the lawn, you want something to refresh you, and you, you, you can just really could sink this quite easily, couldn't yeah. you? It's one of them beers which, which is going to totally refresh you, and it's got all the hoppiness in it as well to, to really back up a good beer. Yeah, for, for a weak beer, it certainly sets full body. Um, yeah, yeah, very drinkable. Yeah, three point eight percent. That is, that is marvelous. Um, cheers. Would you like to get a shot of the fireplace with the old fireplace and stuff now? Might be a wee bit too dark. I think it is. Perhaps uh, we can have another look in the morning. Okay. So this, this pub here we're standing in, this goes right back, this, is, um, this goes back a few hundred years. Yeah, um, so the best person to speak to would probably be the manager, Brendan, if, if you can get um, any info. Hello Brendan, <laughs> can I just ask the, the, the history of the pub and the dates? Um, it goes back to the 14th, 15th century. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know exactly history, but we have a list somewhere of the, the landlords and all of the tenants. Wow. From, from, from that point, 14th, 15th century, right to the current, current day with myself. Um, it's remarkable. It's truly, truly remarkable. It's big as a pub. And for me, I mean, I've been in the business 10, 15 years. It just gives you a sense of context yeah. of where you fit in the greater scheme of things. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and the business has changed. I mean, where we're still the original inn, if you like. And yeah. you can see just the front of the cold area was the actual, was the original steel. Wow. That's it where uh, you can see through the woodwork. No, you don't, you don't. Certainly not from the other cab of the A modern machine cab is a but um, more importantly, as, as as well as the history is <coughs> today's role with a pub has got a ma we were talking about this earlier, um, doing the food pairs. Over the last 10, 15 years, it's always been now, it's moved, moving towards, moving away from just being a drink and have to, to food, food oriented. I'd agree with that. I'd say even more recently, yeah. probably post smoking bar, yeah. I think there's a shift in, in the offer that pubs make. Yeah. I think it's tangible in the industry that you have a lower end, dare I say it, but, but discounted everything, food and wet, and you have a good, good operators and good, good money sustained to the offer. Better quality, but charge yeah. a little bit more for it. And yeah. talking about food and wet, if you're watching America, wet is is the wet sales is the beer. That I feel now is playing an even more important part: the, the food and having a good beer with it. Absolutely. Not just Absolutely. not just food, not just drink. Having the complete package. I, I agree completely. Good beer. I, I think customers are much more discerning now than they have been possibly yeah. in the past, and, and they're quite happy to pay, but they want to pay fully. Yeah, it, it, it's that perceived value for money that they're, they're, they're keen to come out and then more expensive taxations ever increasing. Yeah, and, and yeah. customers are concerned, but they'll, they'll travel and they'll come out to the right house that offers the right product. The, be it the beer, as you say, on the wet side, or the foods just across the board that they're very discerning in terms of they're happy to pay, but they want to pay for quality. Yeah, well, I don't know, well, we're gonna have a crack in now. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll get through as much as we can reviewing wise, but thanks for now. That's a pleasure. Going to be looking forward to staying with you tonight. Thank you, James, for you reviewing much. the master brew with me. What would you give this out of ten, James? Honest opinion. Oh, honest opinion. I'm always going to be slightly biased, can not I? Um, but I, I struggle to find a fault with it, to be honest. And it's a beautifully served pint, and it's yeah. just as it should be. And um, so, if I gave it ten, I'd be um, 
people accuse me of being biased, so I'll give it a nine and a half. Nine and a half? <laughs> I'm going to give it a nine because of the fact that you can, it is one of them session beers we're talking about. You just moan the lawn or you've just done a hard day's in day in work. Absolutely. This is going to totally refresh with 3.8% and it's still got all them happy flavours. Yes. Right, thanks for watching another edition of Real Ale Guide.